Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to Bowl and Spinning. This is episode 224. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Wool and Spinning or Welfare Pearls. It is Saturday, November 20th and I want to welcome you to this place. Welcome to new viewers and uh, welcome to uh, returning viewers. Thank you so much for continuing to watch and to um, you know, like and subscribe and to just be here week after week um, when the show is released publicly around noon on Saturdays. Welcome to our Patreon subscribers. You guys are the ones that are filling up the live chat right now and making it scroll way faster than I can I can keep up and watch. Um, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for your ongoing support of everything that we do here. It means the world and um, yeah, you guys are the reason why we do what we do and the reason why we're here yeah, um, week in and week out. The chat is blowing up because somebody was asking if anyone else has sound. Um, it looks like it's working for everybody. So um, Diane's just figuring out, figuring that out. So that's good. Um, I actually did test it before the show started. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that we wouldn't have any hiccups this morning. We've got queries and explorations happening after the um, show today. Uh, so those who are part of queries and explorations, I look forward to seeing you guys at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern after the show. So that's really exciting. I obviously have a huge pile here next to me and you guys... Um, have lots or I have lots that I that I need to share with you and that I need to update you on and what I've been working on I have um, quite a bit off the loom which I'm really excited to uh, share with you so um, without further ado why don't we just jump into the show I've got community participation for us today as well and actually later today I am teaching for the Etobicoke Guild in Ontario so that's really exciting but it it's a full day, so I appreciate you guys being here with me bright and early. Um, it's actually not that dark here right now. It's actually sort of on the brighter side, and it's finally stopped raining. We It stopped raining on Tuesday afternoon-ish, I think, if my memory serves, after our uh, flooding event. They're calling it a rain and mud event of 2021. Um, many of our well not many I should say quite a few of our friends and family have have lost um, not family quite a few of our friends and, and colleagues and co-workers have um, lost their homes as a result of the flooding that's happened in Abbotsford and uh, Chilliwack it's been all over the news across Canada and I'm sure in parts of the states um, I don't know if the news hit the hit Europe um, that, that BC has just been absolutely pummeled this year with weather um, many of you guys know because you're part of this community and you hear me talk and you hear others who are local to me, um, like Jennifer who's in the chat today, she's just in Bellingham which is about 20 minutes south of me, literally just over the border. Um, her and I could have coffee together on a Tuesday afternoon and it would only be like a 20 minute drive for each of us, that's how close we are. Um, and there's many others who are from the Pacific Northwest um, who are aware of what's been going on. So um, thank you for your thoughts and your prayers and for um, just being aware. And um, for those who feel comfortable making a donation, there are lots of donations on the City of Abbotsford, City of Hope, and City of Chilliwack websites um, for those who want to do something. So thank you so much. So let's run the credits and let's get into the show. So I have not done very much this week and the reason has been because the kids had an unusually heavy week at school. Um, they so because of the way that their school program is set up now they're at home Wednesday Thursday and Friday and um, on Wednesday this past week James had a lunch date with his teacher so he went into the school um, from noon until 1 p.m. Uh, to have lunch with her and um, it was an opportunity to talk about um, what he's really into what are the things that he thinks about um, what are the things that he plays with what 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 are you know just to kind of get to know him um, and to ask him sort of covertly without him knowing 
sort of what he's struggling with at school and what are some of the things that he that he wants to work on. Um, it was her way of, of connecting with each of the boys in the class. Um, she calls them her gentlemen. Uh, there's 10 boys in his class and, and it's been a very challenging dynamic. So it's been really cool to see her think outside the box and try some different things. So he went in for lunch on Wednesday. On Monday, because of the flooding, um, I have to tell you guys this story because it was truly like unbelievable. And I was telling my mom and my mom looked at me and she was like, I am so proud of you. And it was just kind of one of those moments where you're just like, it wasn't that big a deal, mom. Like I literally turned the car around, but she was like, I'm just so glad you didn't try to keep going. So what ended up happening was I was on the way to the kids school. They only go to school Mondays and Tuesdays. And we were driving and what ended up happening was I realized within about five minutes of us leaving the house that we probably shouldn't try to get to the school that day. And I tried to turn around, but there was nowhere to turn around because every time I went to turn left or turn right to be able to get back to our house, um, the road was closed because of flooding because the roads were washing out. So I kind of had to stay on the main roads and the main roads that I drive to get to the kids school have medians. So you can't like do a three point turn in the middle of a main road, right? Because there's a median there. And so people with trucks were doing that, but I'm in a car. So I kept getting pushed further and further south, which is further and further toward the border, which is where Jennifer lives. Um, but it's also further, it's closer and closer to the kids school. So at one point, um, we were almost at the kids school and we've been driving by then for about 45 minutes and the kids school is about 20 minutes away. And I said to the kids, I'm going to go to Nana's house and we're, we'll turn, we'll just stay there until sort of after the morning rush and we'll turn around and we'll go home. And the kids were like, okay, okay. But I couldn't make any of the turns to get to where I needed to go to get to my mom's house. So um, it, it, it just kept pushing me further and further towards the kids school. So by now we're like 10 minutes from the kids school. So I said to them, okay, let's turn right. We'll try to go to school and then I'll go to Nana's house and I'll stay there until um, I need to pick you guys up because it's closer to, to, to mom's house to get to the school. So the kids are like, okay. So we went to turn right, no problem, driving along the road. I've got a big Jeep in front of me and a couple of cars in front of me, uh, in front of him and a couple of trucks. So everybody's going and all of a sudden, just like the whole morning, everything was gridlocked, nobody was moving. And uh, as we were coming up, everybody all of a sudden had stopped in front of us and so we're waiting and I thought, I wonder what's going on because this is really strange to be, there's not that many, many cars. We are bumper to bumper, but this is really weird. And so I could see the truck in front, like two, two or three cars ahead. He was going and he'd all of a sudden really slowed down and he had gone on to the left-hand side of the road. So remember in North America, we drive on the right-hand side. So he had gone to the left-hand side of the road. So then the car behind him started to go. And then all of a sudden they put their flashers on, their, their four ways. Um, their hazard lights and then the Jeep in front of us went around them and kept going and followed the truck because he was in a big Jeep and I sat there for literally like a split second and I was like I'm not going so as we were turning around the the road was actually in the process of washing out and flooding and it was just like the kids were just like oh my goodness mommy so like thank you for not going <laughs> I was like because the car in front they had flooded so the car the water had come up so high that it actually washed over like it was up halfway up their door and it was it had flooded their engine like it had gotten the engine wet and they had they had immediately stalled so I turned around the car behind us was like a 1995 98 Pontiac Sunfire and they went and next thing I know they had their flashes on and the whole road was closed it was unbelievable so long story short I did get the kids to the school but it's been a week so and we've got quite a few we've got two very close close colleagues that have lost their homes so um yeah just a lot going on people here that's kind of all that they're talking about the people behind us at the swimming pool yesterday they were like we're so sick of talking about the heat in the summer the fires covid <laughs> and now now the flooding <laughs> they're like we're just like can we just not talk about this anymore so I didn't get a lot done because James went back into school on Wednesday, Nora had a field trip on Wednesday, and then we Thursday, Friday, they had really, really heavy school weeks because they've got portfolio this week. So what portfolio is, is they go over their term work with their teacher, with, with me and Mike present on uh, Tuesday. So um, yeah, I didn't get anything done. However, I did get, um, uh, so I got some major, major progress done on these towels. So why don't we talk about those first and then we'll talk about the little bit of spinning that I got done. 
um, that I'm actually really excited about and I'm really excited to have a new spinning project, a couple of new spinning projects going. So I actually have this rolled up like a bolt of fabric. And uh, yeah, I mean, thank you, uh, Josie. People are saying, you know, um, um, you know, that the sad events in BC and my heart is with you. Thank you so much, you guys. And um, I know Diana, Diana just popped in lots of loss of livestock, lives changed, some lost, absolutely. Um, the, I think one of the things that this really has reinforced, Mike and I spent a lot of time talking about it is like, um, this climate stuff is, is really, really real. You know, Ontario is not getting the winters like they used to get. And then of course, I think they said on CBC, it's like the wimpy winter. Um, and then they get these sweltering hot summers. Um, you know, we're, we're Canada, unfortunately is, um, like the rest of the world is, um, we're really sort of seeing the effects of some of this stuff. And then the question is, what do we do about it? And how do we sort of mobilize and, and um, make some changes? I, I, that's the part I think that most feel powerless about. So let me just flip the cameras. So this is actually eight tea towels worth of, um, uh, worth of, of weaving. Um, I'll see, I don't know, maybe my camera zoomed in a little bit here because I, I feel like it shouldn't be quite so tight for you guys to be able to see. So this is eight tea towels worth of weaving. And the reason why it's rolled up like a bolt of fabric, sorry, I just uh, wiggled the table, is because um, I've been going through and fixing all the skips. So what ended up happening was in the orange here, it was the solid orange. Um, I feel this is red red and orange and then orange the solid orange stripe here um there was i think the tension on one of the warp threads wasn't quite right and it's ended up creating all throughout the entire length of fabric these random skips sometimes it skips over like an inch or two and sometimes it skips over just like a couple of threads it got worse as I got to the end of the warp. And so I've been going through really systematically and going through obviously all of it, but particularly the orange and making sure um, that it's fixed. So I've done all of this, the skips are all fixed on this part of the fabric. So I fixed six of the eight towels. And um, this is what the towels look like. I'll hold them up in the other camera because it's I don't want to undo my bolt of fabric <laughs> because I know that that end is fixed. So this is what they look like. And this is a pattern from um, Jane Stafford's online guild. And I have to go through and trim all of this stuff. I had left it and I shouldn't have. I, I should have trimmed it and I, I didn't when it was on the loom. And of course, it I realized later that I needed to trim it because um, um, it was getting caught in the front um, apron rod. But that's okay lessons learned and it's all wrinkled it's not washed yet not finished yet because I have to fix all of these skips but this is her rainbow gamp um that's from the online guild and I love this um you know there there I had this conversation with somebody in the slack channel um this past week or the week before about sort of the symbolism behind rainbows and what they mean and I just um I just I just love these, especially with what's been going on. So there's going to be, uh, there's eight of them. I'm hoping to send a couple to my in-laws and a couple to friends. And then I would like to keep a couple. So they're going to sort of be eaten up with some Christmas gifts. But it ended up being just a really lovely pattern. Um, I set it at 18, wove it to 18 picks per inch for a balanced weave. Um, and what I did, it's intense because you're changing every half inch or inch you're changing um, your colors. So what I ended up doing was when I came to, like let's take the yellow for example, when I did the solid yellow stripe, I did the black and then I started with yellow to kind of, it's those little things, right? That just make your heart sing. So that I ended with orange, which went into the orange solid and then started with orange and black, orange and red, orange and red, and then the red and then the 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 border where I will hem them. So these haven't been uh, washed yet, but hopefully I'll have some finished for next next time. So there's only eight. I was hoping for more like 10 or 11, but to be honest with you, once I got to about towel seven, I was like, okay, I'm ready to be done. Um, it's intense changing color so much. You can see all of the ends and all of the, um, the, the weaving in, and I wouldn't do this if I were to do it again. I, I tucked in my ends quite long at the beginning because I was playing around with different ways to tuck your tail. And towards the end, I think I really figured out the way that I like to do it, where you just wrap it around your edge thread and then tuck it back in a few, a few warp threads in. You don't, you don't need to wrap them in quite so long. Um, 
So I learned a lot and uh, with doing the OHS uh, stuff at the same time, um, I think that was really nice because it really helped me to um, sort of look at my technique that I had started out with and then um, continuing to work on it and perfect it as, as I went on with the towel. So I have to say, even though the skips got worse towards the end, the weaving is better um, at the, on those last couple of towels. So um, that was kind of nice to be able to sit down and actually look at and see the difference. So yeah, now I've kept all of my thrums from when I cut it off the loom and that is what I've been using to fix my skips. So then all of this sort of doesn't go to waste. I know some people save these and these are kind of long this time round as I make a bigger mess. Um, these are kind of long because I was, I knew that I couldn't get another whole towel out of this. I wove a few inches at the end, uh, just to play around with some colors, but I ended up cutting it off the loom because that's those skips were getting worse and worse and worse. And, um, I didn't really want to have a bunch of cloth. I would rather use these. So I'm going to save them, um, and use them as, as ties for, for warp because they're just like the perfect length. So I'm gonna put them over here because they're getting really beaten up by me playing with them. And uh, I'm gonna move these so that I don't mess up my bolt of fabric. Thank you for your compliments about the towels. The gaps that, um, that, that Jane Stafford does are really, really neat. Um, they're not difficult and they're, um, they're really, really, um, or at least I find them really, it, 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 they they stretch your mind you you've got a whole lesson that goes with them and then you can put them on the loom and enjoy the process of just weaving them with the knowledge that she's given you for the project to be able to weave and, and get them going which I really really enjoy so Mary says thrums are very useful I often use them as yarn skein ties warp ties or even use them in tablet weaving weft that's a great idea Mary um, oh, thank you, Suzanne. She likes my towels. Thank you for your kind words, you guys, about the towels. Um, all the learning. Yes, absolutely, Diana. Um, let's see. I'm just catching up with chat. You guys are so fast um, this morning. So the warp, uh, the weight of the warp. Thank you, uh, Barbara. I never said. It's just two eight cotton. Um, it's just Maurice, Maurice, um, Maurice Broussard 2.8 cotton and I used the primary colors so it was like the primary like violet, um, navy blue, cobalt, green, yellow, orange like it was the it was the colors that are like the the clean color um, red, orange, yellow, blue, um, green what else did I use? There was 13 color combinations in total because of the, uh, oh, and, and uh, uh, pur the purple. So, and then to have that kind of go across the whole warp. So it worked out really well. I'm excited to get some, to get some photos. Um, so yeah, uh, two eight cotton is a weaving weight. Um, Eve, she says like fingering weight, it's finer than that. Um, it's two eight cotton is two strands of cotton. Can't really show it to you very well, but it's a really great um, uh, tea towel weight. A lot of people use it. A lot of people end up with big, big stashes of 2-8 cotton. You should see uh, Jane Stafford. This always makes me think of this. She puts out all of the colors in like a big color wheel on her table um, in the in the School of Sweet Joy, uh, uh, sorry, in the Jane Stafford Online Guild. And um, you can see all of the colors. It's just like unbelievable. I finished a skein this week, which was kind of unexpected because I didn't um, get a lot of time, but I finished this off and I am so happy with it. This is my 4060 Polworth Silk from uh, West Coast Color. I bought this from Lynn at Fibers, no, at Knit City. I keep wanting to call Knit City Fibers West. I have no idea why. I've done that for years. I, I feel like they both should be called Fibers West. I have no idea why. Um, this is, uh, so yeah, it's 60% um, organic pole worth, 40% silk. It was just an absolute dream to spin. We, we talked about it on the podcast quite a few times. And um, I showed you how I spun it um, on the on the Ashford e-spinner um, a, a few times when, um, uh, once for sure, I think I demoed it once for sure, not in the last show, but the show before. What I was really surprised about with this spin is actually there's quite a bit more yellow in it than I thought that there was. And that tealy blue just comes through so beautifully. 
And then the brown just offers such a lovely um, depth and movement and um, it just offers sort of some more interest to the yarn. Whereas if it was just the yellow and the blue, I, I think it would be um, a little bit, a little bit, um, not garish, but just not as, not as pleasing. Um, so with the brown in there, it just offers a bit of movement, depth, tone. You know, we talk a lot about in, in our breeding color study, what adding black or adding gray or adding white does. And this is a great example where that brown is sort of a bit grayish and it just ties everything together. This was my spinner's control card that I used for it. And this was my two ply that I had taken off the loom. And it's got, you know, a little bit of elasticity, about 25%. It, it, the plyback test came out at about 30 degrees for the twist angle. So what I did was this is unfinished, unwashed, um, fresh off the wheel. When I did my, uh, when I skeined the yarn after plying, I had tried really hard as I was plying and I, I plied on my Magicraft Susie. I counted my treadles so that I would end up with a ply, with a two ply that looked like this, but a tiny bit tighter um, so that it would account for the washing and the finishing. So you can see here that, that the, the, if I bring it right up, you can see that the twist angle is a little bit more severe, just slightly, a little bit more twisted. And then what you end up with is a yarn that matches that plyback test, which is pretty awesome. Uh, because of the silk content, this yarn is quite strong. Um, it's, I, I can't break it with my hands. Um, I think if I really reefed on it, I could, but it would hurt. Um, and that's kind of neat because that means that I could probably do something woven with it. I have quite a lot of yardage here, even though the skein looks quite small. Um, it's at least 500 yards, which is pretty cool. So I've got something to play with there. And I'm excited about that actually, because I've got my other skein sitting here. I've, I've got some planning that I did with uh, Weaving Projects. This is my Itsy Bitsy Yarn Shop Baby Ultra, Ultra Fine Baby Alpaca. Um, another one of Jane Stafford's gaps that she's got, and I feel like it's in season three, is that cramming and denting scarf that we talked about last time. So I'm actually um, hoping to wind that warp this week. I've still got OHS samples to do. I need to do my three original samples and get those um, going and get those finished. And um, I'm almost at the end of this warp. So I'll need to do one more just small baby warp for those last couple of samples, which is totally fine. It's really actually quite fast. And that'll be done. So spins in progress. I started this this week and we talked about this extensively on the wool circle. It's what the entire episode was about when we live streamed this past Wednesday. Thank you so much, you guys, for being so flexible about changing the stream times because let me tell you, I've, we've already talked about it, the week was pretty crazy. So these were all of the samples, but I wanted to mention this spin really quickly because this is a really fascinating uh, spin and spinning it on the wheel and, and doing it with you guys for the first time, not having worked with these fibers in this combination before was really cool to be able to sort of work through it. This will absolutely be a yarn for weaving with. Um, we'll, I'll spin it a tiny bit tighter than I maybe would. And uh, this is white faced woodland. It's from chaotic fibers. It's one of their kind of weird and wonderful blends that they do. Uh, white faced woodland, llama, ramy, and bamboo. So the only thing in this blend and in this spin that has scales and elasticity and memory is the white faced woodland. Everything else has drape and warmth, um, especially the llama, not so much the ramy and the bamboo, but, but, um, uh, definitely that llama is going to be very warm and, uh, sheen. So I don't know if you can see that there on the light, if I move it around a little bit. I have to tell you guys what happened this morning. I'll, I'll tell you in just a sec. Um, so this has been one of those spins where it, it will go onto my Magic Craft um, once I am finished what's currently on it. Uh, and I've, I've just sort of ended up falling in love with this fiber. Like it is just so cool. So if you strip it apart, you've got to be really, really careful about stripping because of the flyaways. And then I've been pre-drafting it. I would even strip it again, actually. Bring it down really, really fine. No, it's not toothy at all. Great question, Eve. The white-faced woodland is actually incredibly um, soft and fine in this. This almost feels like uh, this blend 
to to somebody who doesn't know they would probably say it was like merino silk that's what it feels like and it almost kind of feels a bit super washy to somebody who who um you know has that like kind of nose and, and can feel the fibers as they kind of play with them they would maybe say oh um, it's quite a high silk content. That's that's kind of what it feels like. So that's what I've been doing to prepare for spinning. It's just these little little nests of fiber, and then pre-drafting them. And I'm using what I ended up doing on my after we finished the stream on on Wednesday. I played with it for a bit longer, and I um, got out my silk lap cloth because I'm finding it sticking to everything. And I think that's just the flyaway nature of the uh, Raimi and the bamboo. There's nothing for it to stick to. And then you've got that beautiful llama in there as well. So we'll be talking about that some more over the coming weeks. To be honest with you guys, I've been having to keep my wheels free for, um, especially my Kromsky, for teaching um, the uh, the workshop that I'm teaching for Etobicoke over the next uh, two Saturdays. So today and next Saturday. I, I haven't been able to put anything on that wheel because it's... Um, uh, because it's a flax workshop and I need my my flax distaff so I've kind of been leaving it leaving it uh, free oh welcome to Karen she's just popping in um, oh and Suzanne says you were right about the brown and gray really adding to the yellow and teal combination I have spun the yellow and teal before as a gradient and I like it but the brown would have made it better yeah it's funny Suzanne as we collect information and as we spin more things we we start to sort of reflect on some of those things um, I have a llama sweater and even here in Alberta, I keep, get warm in it in the winter. I bet Kelly, llama and alpaca are unbelievably warm. I had a, do you guys remember Barocco Ultra Alpaca? I don't know if they make it anymore, but I had a, a sweater that was out of Barocco Ultra Alpaca when I first started knitting and I didn't know what I didn't know. And I ended up being really super sensitive to the sweater. I would sneeze and sneeze and sneeze. And so I kind of abandoned it and I ended up giving it to a friend. I don't even know if she still has it. And uh, it was so warm. Like I could not wear it with a jacket over top, even if it was just a rain jacket. It was just so warm. Um, Mary says white face woodland is lovely to spin. Ingle Nook has some great blends using this fiber. That's great, Mary. Uh, will there be lots of twist print? So that's actually part of what we ended up talking about in the wool circle, actually, um, Karen. Great question. Um, the because of the llama and the Raimi and the bamboo in there, particularly the llama and the and the Raimi, it just does not take a ton of twist. Um, the the yarn and the singles as we were spinning really resisted a lot of twist going in there. And what ended up happening, this was the sample, just looking at them, I can even tell which one it is. This was the sample that I ended up picking that I'll spin the fiber to. And like, I can't break this. Like I'm pulling hard. Look at my fingers changing color. I, ca I can't break it. Um, and that's just a ply back test. That's not even plied. And that's the, the combination of those really strong fibers in there. I find Raimi when I spin just Raimi. We've done it over the years in the community. And I, I have dreams about weaving a Raimi um, stole that's quite finely spun. It's, uh, it, it can be quite, um, well, it can be quite challenging to spin, but it also, it's got amazing drape and the luster of it, it's just beautiful. Those bast fibers are just amazing, but um, it doesn't like a ton of twist. It's very strong um, and it, um, if you try to put a lot of twist in it, it just ends up becoming like ropey and and it's not very nice so yeah definitely some fibers that we can look at in the future if you guys are interested so i'm going to flip my camera around and show you hopefully this goes relatively smoothly smoothly i have another spin don't look if you get motion sick um i have another spin on my e-spinner and you guys get to see how messy my uh my my cart is here it's kind of become a dumping ground over the last week or so so I grabbed this fiber. It's actually here in my side pocket here. Um, I grabbed this fiber out of my stash. It was something that I had bought uh, during, at, right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, Rebecca and I went to Sweet Georgia on the way to the airport when the day that everything was shutting down. So they, at, the th at 3 p.m. on March 17th, 2020. And the only reason why I remember that is because it's my dad's birthday. Um, we were driving to Sweet Georgia to the studio to, um, uh, so that Rebecca could join because of course Fibers West had been canceled and then Rebecca was flying out. And so we were going sort of Sweet Georgia and then the airport because they're about 20 minutes apart at that time in the old studio. 
and well actually even in the new studio it's about 20 minutes from the airport so um this was um on their in their seconds bin because something had happened with it or the colorway was discontinued or something had happened it was 30 percent off and i just fell in love with the colors so this is called hearth i don't know if they still have it or not i'm not totally sure if this is a colorway that they still have but because of the price i ended up getting two so my plan oh and something just fell so my plan is actually to just spin them both end to end, not strip, not do anything. And I will um, ply them together, like just keep it super, super simple. And the content of this is silk puff. So this is silk puff. It's 40% merino, 40% superwash merino and 20% silk. I've spun this before as part of uh, the fiber club when I used to spin fiber club every month for them and uh, I think the big thing about this blend that I really noticed is um it's supposed to really puff up in the washing and the finishing but the nice thing about it is that it takes um a lot of twist and so you can really get it going really really nicely and get the e-spinner um really spinning so I'll just give you guys a really quick quick and dirty it is um mary it, that's exactly what this is um what the card is and actually i've seen these carts elsewhere um i've seen them at like lots of different stores but this one did originally come from um come from ikea yes years ago oh my goodness i've had this thing for so long i'm not sure i'm gonna be able to show you guys there we go so what I've been doing is kind of getting myself going. I'll see if I can stay within the camera here. And then running it at about 230, 230 on the, on the, on the speed dial. It just takes the twist beautifully. And it's kind of the, the top kind of keeps falling apart because there's nothing really to keep it together. It's not going to stick to each other with that superwash merino and that silk in there. So what I've been doing is just kind of grabbing those fibers and uh, kind of trying to hold them in, in my palm. I wanted this to be a really super relaxing spin. I didn't want it to be uh, stressful. I wanted it to just be really, really enjoyable. Something I would want to spin when we're watching a movie on a Friday night or a Saturday night, although I didn't spin last night. Nora went on a sleepover at, at my mom's house last night and uh, James of course is at soccer this morning. So and then they're going to go over there today because of me being so so tied up. They're going over to decorate the tree and they're going to bake some cookies and they're having a special day with Nana and Mike, my husband, and then the, and the kids. So they're just like over the moon. So we watched a movie last night with James, but I, I ended up not spinning. I just cuddled on the couch with him. He wanted cuddles and I was tired, so that's what we did. So you can see that I've been spinning this quite quickly. So then to slow it down, because it's going so quickly, I use this speed dial to, to slow it down before I turn it off. Otherwise, there's just an unbelievable amount of backspin. And then I'll show you guys the uh, the plyback test, and it's quite it's quite firm. So that yarn is, is quite quite tightly twisted there move my cart in <laughs> trying to figure out the camera and talk at the same time is sometimes a little bit challenging so that's kind of what it's looking like um what i really like about this is it's just a total autopilot spin and uh, i've just been really 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 enjoying it so i started that last weekend and it's just a little bit you know it's just something it's it's nothing major it's not not uh not a huge amount it's just just a little bit of something going on my going on going on my wheel and I can drag it around with me. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, Jennifer, absolutely. The idea of the heart of, of the cart to hold everything um, and I drag it around with me everywhere so I can drag it into the family room. I can drag it into the living room more often than not. I spin on my Kromsky. Sorry, on my uh, Ashford. On my Susie, um, we'll get there eventually. On my Susie, on my on my on my Magicraft Susie Pro, that's the wheel that I go to for just about everything. The second wheel that I go to for just about everything, which is actually I'm gonna put this on there, the wood the white faced woodland. Um, my my Kromsky Saxon. Or, 
um, my Lendrum Saxony. The problem with that wheel is I can't drag it around the house. And often when I actually get a chance to sit down and spin, it's when we're watching a movie on a Friday night or a Saturday night. And that's when the majority of that kind of mindless, really meditative, enjoyable spinning happens. And um, the Lendrum is not quite as portable, but I, it's like my second kind of go-to wheel. And, and then I, I find myself going to the e-spinner more and more again. And I think uh, part of that is just uh, portability. It's just ease and it, and it just is easy to, to move things around. Um, it is an interesting mix, the Superwash and the regular Merino. It's kind of one of those weird blends that just kind of works. Um, you get the, the bounce and the sproying of the Merino. Um, the, the, the silk gives it that sheen. The Superwash gives it the softness. It's not overly warm, um, which is kind of nice in our climate. It makes a beautiful shawl. I spun it. Some people really like it for socks. Um, I think with the silk in there, it offers it offers a you know some strength to the to the merino. Um, I don't know if you could machine wash because that 100% merino in there would still felt, um, but maybe the superwash merino in there would keep it from felting. It's 20% silk, so it's quite a bit of silk. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any experience with that, I would love to hear. All right, let's go into, oh, we have cat bills to talk about. So let me, let me share this with you. I am completely and totally finished cat bills. This was such a fast sweater to make. I have 28, I measured it, 28 grams of wool left. So I can't remember, I don't have the tag right here because of course I put it away. Um, I'm not exactly sure, if I look in the show notes, I'm not exactly sure what the, um, yardage is of this and how much yard how many yards I have left but yeah I haven't updated my Ravelry project page yet but um uh, I only have 28 grams left for my size uh the pattern called for 2800 sorry for 1200 yards of yarn and to uh lengthen the sleeves and I did cut the body off about um two inches maybe an inch two inches early and then with the pockets, um, I, I I was starting to get a little bit worried. When I started the second sleeve, I was like, mm, I wonder if I'm gonna have that much yarn left over. So the pattern definitely calls for the correct amount of yarn, at least for, for my knitting experience. I had gauge and um, I'm really happy with the results. So at Knit City, not Fibers West, at Knit City, I tried on the medium, it was the uh, sample and I just found it would have been perfect. Like if that's what I'd been buying in the store and that was the only size, I probably would have bought it. But uh, because I had the opportunity to knit it and because I had the opportunity to do a size that was correct for me, I did end up going down to the size small because the medium, the upper sleeves were really, really big. I have quite big arms anyways. We've talked about this before on the podcast, but even that was just a little bit too big. So it ended up creating a lot of fabric, extra fabric up here. It is a drop shoulder. It's supposed to have a lot of fabric up here, but I could see that when I had it on and when I was wearing it, cause I wore it over to Lynn's booth in West Coast Color, uh, cause we were in the middle of a conversation. So I put it on and I kind of wandered away and um, uh, Megan's sister was doing the booth at that time and she was really cool about it. But um, uh, I had it on for a few minutes and I just felt like it was a lot of sweater. And so I decided to go down to the size small. I'm really happy that I did. And then I did, like I said, I took a couple of inches off the bottom. I feel like you knit to 24 inches or 25 inches, something like that. And then you add the one inch of ribbing at the bottom. And I ended up knitting to like 22 or 23 inches, I think. But then I put the pockets in the same spot and uh, I didn't make any modifications to the sleeve. So yeah. Oh, that's funny, Josie. My kids complain about my Ashford Kiwi is too noisy for watching movies. Um, I don't think it's that silent. And it's funny because sometimes the kids will say, mama, you have to oil your wheel. It's getting squeaky. <laughs> um, you know, cause they're super into what they're watching. So yeah. And Diana has a really good point. Spindles are super quiet. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Support spindling actually while we're watching a movie is, has become one of my favorite things I have to I have to say. So this is what it looks like on. Um, I can see already that this is going to become one of my absolute most favorite sweaters. I'm probably going to wear this all the time. And uh, I think one of the things about it is it's just so wearable. 
and it's super uh the style right now is really popular too because um these boxy kind of over oversized sweaters are, are really popular right now so that is cat bells and i'll try and get some finished photos i haven't photographed the last few sweaters which has been so, so terrible. I haven't photographed Larch. I haven't photographed, um, oh, what was it called? It was so pretty. Um, Enchanté, I haven't photographed that. I haven't photographed this. <laughs> I think part of it is we've had such a rainy fall that on the weekends it's raining and that's when Mike is available to take photos. So the other thing I will say about this is because it's local wool, it's my friend Anne's sheep. Because Diana, I think you had said you have this this yarn as well in your stash. You had five skeins because you could totally make this too. We could be twins. Um, this oatmeal color is just beautiful. Like you don't need to dye it at all. It's got all of that, that sort of oatmeal -y color. It looks like it's already dyed, which is really nice, but it's not that bright white ivory kind of color that you get sometimes in undyed fleece. So I really like the natural kind of oatmeal kind of shade of this. Um, this knits incredibly fast. If I hadn't have had the hiccup with the pockets where I just was having a mental block, um, this would have been knit really, really quickly. I have not washed and blocked it. Um, I know this sounds really kind of terrible, but I actually might not. It just, it doesn't need to be. I'll just wear it for a while. And then in the spring, when it warms up, when it needs, when I need to wash it for, to put it away for the summer, I'll wash it then. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, Diana. It would look great on you too because of the your style and what you wear. Um, you know, it would just look awesome. So absolutely copycat. I don't mind at all. Um, that's how we learn. That's how we get inspired, right? You and I talk about that all the time. Uh, no, actually, Dion, it's not super bulky. This is a worsted weight. And I feel really badly that I don't have the tag because I had it last week and I put it somewhere. And in my mess that I've created this week with getting prepared for the workshop this afternoon, um, I think I put it away again, which was not the right thing to do. So, oh, I do have it. Dion, somebody's looking after you. Um, so, no, this is not it. <laughs> Never mind. This is the tag for, um, for this. Um, so I don't have the tag right here. I'm really sorry. I'll put it, I'll update it on my, uh, Ravelry project page and then I'll post it in the Slack channel. So the yarn weight is, is worsted. So yeah. Um, how often do you wash your knits? That's a great question, Eve. Um, probably once or twice a year. I try to go through all of my sweaters and wash them in the summer. And I try to do it on a day when if I wash them all in the morning, they'll be dry by the evening at the latest. Um, and I will, I don't do them all at once. I'll do two or three at a time. And then I lay them, I've got blocky mats and I've got a couple of sweater, um, like mesh sweater things. And I'll try to do two or three at a time where I could actually bang through two or three in a day. Um, where if I wash in the morning, they're dry by noon and then I could do another couple, um, and get them dry by dinner time. Um, I don't like to put them out in the hot, hot sun. So I try to make sure it's a day that's quite warm where they'll dry in the shade. Oh, that's a good question, Julie. How do you think cat bells would look in a marled yarn? In a marled yarn? I don't know. I think it would look great. The marled yarns are really, really popular um, right now. This The sample was knit in a tweed. Um, so if that helps at all, I bet if you looked on Ravelry, there's people who've done it in a marled yarn. Cause you know, those cascade eco and ecological, those yarns, a lot of them are marled and people have used those. So definitely have a look. Okay. It's getting on in time. So let's go into community participation. I was resting my, resting my voice, sitting here drinking tea. Pretty great thing to be able to do. Sit on a Saturday morning, drink tea, sit with friends for an hour and chat with them about what we're working on. It's pretty special. <laughs> pretty special indeed. Uh, Josie, you are so funny. I worry about that every time I put a sweater outside to block. Um, she asks, has a bird ever pooped on a sweater blocking outside? So, I don't even want to answer this because I feel like I'm tempting fate, 
but no. My biggest fear, I know you guys are going to laugh at me. You know what I actually worry about? You know how the smell of wool has that smell to it, right? It smells like wet wool. The dogs used to get at the stuff. So if there was something blocking outside or if it was on the front porch, um, our front porch is totally covered. And so if there's anything out there that was blocking, I'd make sure that the dogs didn't go out there. Cause the few times that I did wet skeins outside, if the dogs were outside, Charlie would jump up and he'd grab it and pull it down. Cause they're a pretty big dog. Um, and, uh, so since not having dogs anymore, um, I don't worry about dogs or cats or anything getting to the sweaters. What I do worry about is like squirrels and raccoons and mice because uh, we have all of those things in our neighborhood and um, I do worry about birds like especially the crows coming and just landing on it and kind of like digging their their um, feet into it. So it's funny I I, <laughs> I don't worry about it pooping but I worry about other things. So I do keep a close eye. Um, I don't leave stuff outside if I'm not around. Um, so yeah, that, that's hilarious. <laughs> I do wonder about that. Um, oh, thank you, Diana. The show is a great way to start the weekend. Thanks for hosting and organizing. Thank you, Diana. Your spindle, uh, she did a spindle road, ro um, what was it? A spindle, um, runway on uh, Tuesday night at Guild. It was awesome. It was so inspiring. And actually I have to admit, I did go home and on Thursday, um, Mike just got a promotion at work and so we we're celebrating tonight. We're going out for dinner and, uh, he, uh, um, it's, and it's, it's been, it's been a very emotional week, not because of the natural disaster, but because of what's been going on in our home. Uh, and, um, uh, so he, I asked, I said to him, I'm like, I'm going to buy a couple of spindles and he's like, Kate, go for it. So a little bit of celebration and also really feeling inspired after Tuesday night. So I got a couple of new support spindles. I'm really excited about coming because I do use them. I don't talk about the stuff on the show very much because the last big project that I pulled off my support spindles was all of my how I, all of my um, uh, breeding color study, all that Jacob. So that's all of the content for this month uh, that's come out. So uh, that was all support spindle spun. So this is from Evelyn. This is uh, spindle spun stitches. Speaking about spindle spinning. This is a short stapled carded preparation that I was having lots of trouble with on my wheel but it works a lot better on this tiny Russian spindle and it's just the cutest little spindle. I'm not going for good right now just for holds together because supported spindling feels very different from a drop spindle or a wheel, absolutely. So most of it is overspun but there are a bunch of split felted joins in there. Uh, spit felted joints. Whenever the spindle is full, I attach the yarn to the ball and wind it off. I have to do that quite often, so I guess it's time for more support spindles. I wanted to thank Ray Rainbow Ange, so Ange, I, who I don't think is here today. Um, I was having a lot of trouble getting started with this spindle, but your woolen spinning radio episode made it click for me. Huge thank you. I couldn't make it work with the spindle right in front of me on the table. The spindle kept collapsing, the yarn kept breaking, and the position was just uncomfortable. But sitting on the ground, so Ange calls herself a, a, a ground dweller, um, or the couch and putting the spindle to my right side makes it possible to draft and suddenly it's relaxing. Thank you so much. So thank you to Ange again for sharing some of her knowledge and her, um, and being so forthcoming. Um, she's been a very active member of our community for quite a long time and it was really fun to have her on Wool and Spinning Radio this month for her to talk about spindle spinning. We had a great conversation. So thank you, Evelyn, for, um, yeah, for, for saying, for saying such nice things about Ange. She's just wonderful. This is from Diana. She showed these mitts on Tuesday night actually at Guild, making mitts from my spindle spun summer skein with a photo of the yarn on the spindles back from back when. So these were all of the spindles that she used to spin that yarn. And the funny thing is at Guild, this, the mitts are actually a different color. <laughs> so we had this whole conversation about whether or not that was okay or not. We all agreed that it was totally okay. But what ended up happening was she took uh, some of the yarn and put it through the drum carter. And so because of that, it changed some of the finished, uh, the finished color of, of the mitts because one ended up being a little bit more blended in the color. Anyways, they're still absolutely beautiful. They look amazing. I'm hoping that she'll wear them lots as a good memory of, of this past summer. They're wonderful. This is from Laura for nat for our natural shades along. I thought this was so, she shared this on, on Ravelry and I thought this was just so inspiring. 
Um, she was told that we before that we went to an alpaca farm with our girls and they picked some alpaca fleece for mittens. This was my first project from raw fleece and it was so much fun. I bought my own drum carter today after I finished the knitting. The yarn was just enough for mitts and a headband for each. So the girls picked out the, um, the fleece and then she spun the yarn and made the mitts and the headbands. Isn't that fantastic? What a cool way to, something to, to do for your girls, for your kids. I think that's awesome. This is Zero to Hero from Maria. I love this sweater so much, Maria. I might come and take it. This mostly hand spun sweater has been in my dreams for a long time. I had seen a sweater version of sheep haid pattern of the sheep haid pattern soon after I started to spin. That pattern is linked in the show notes for, for you guys. Um, it was a pattern by uh, Kate Davies. Uh, soon after I started to spin, I had the pattern for that hat, the hat from very early times. I did swatch and count the size, but this needed some trying and ripping. But in the end, this turned out like I had hoped. The greenish yarn is indie dyed, but the others are natural colors of Finn, uh, Kenu, Harmas. That's the uh, wool that I have in my stash, the Norwegian wool that I've been sampling and playing with that I haven't had a chance to get back to. Um, and Shetland sheep fleeces. The yarn is about a sport weight. Isn't that beautiful? Love this so much. Yeah. Heed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eve. Sheep heed. Thank you. I said it heed, but it's heed. Thank you. I appreciate that, Eve. This is from Julie. The next two are really fun to uh, share because they're both from the same um, uh, pattern. And it's from, so for those of you who are working on the Shawlography by Stephen West and you don't want to see um, spoilers, go ahead right now. Do it right now. Because <laughs> uh, you're going to see spoilers in just a second. So this is Julie. This is my hashtag zero to hero, hashtag Shawlography maker cow from my hand dyed, hand spun, two ply fingering weight. Uh, Jacob Wool. Uh, around half of my fleece and it was quite an adventure. This is really fun, Julie. It looks amazing. You did a beautiful job and actually because you chose the colors and you dyed it, um, I think it really works. Um, it, it really, like there's a rhyme and a reason to it. It looks like it's very cohesive. It goes together because some of them are pretty crazy. <laughs> It's been really fun to watch this one from the sidelines because his shawls always come out so massive and to watch people working through the clues and whatnot on like Instagram and stuff, it's been kind of fun to watch because this one was, was pretty crazy. So really well done, Julie, really fun. This one is from Kat, same pattern, um, but she changed the border. So cats, my shawlography is almost finished. I'm one of those who didn't like the border. So I went with a different striping sequence and I tried the crossed stitches, but found them really hard to move along. So swapped for a bit of netting. I think it's really effective cat. Really, really, really beautiful. And again, she chose really cohesive colors that really work well together. Really beautiful. And I really like that green in there that just pops. There's those pops of that lime green, the kind of almost neon green, at least in the photo. And it really works with the brown and the kind of creamy gray and the rest of that skein of green. I think it just looks awesome. So beautiful. Both of you, Kelly, uh, Julie and Kat, beautiful. Um, and this last Zero to Hero is from Megan and it's actually a double finished project, although she, um, is highlighting the skirt here. Um, she made a red corduroy skirt for her new sweater. So this is her newest um, Feral uh, colorwork sweater. Just beautiful, beautiful. That'll be really fun to wear through December and through the new year when everybody just needs some color. <clears throat> Both are beautiful. <clears throat> Love that one. It's a stunner. You guys are so kind when you say about your comments. Oh, Becca, good to see. Good to see you. Have a good dinner. This is from Helen. Helen and Crystal. So this is just play. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct. That's from Carl Jung. So Helen and Crystal have ended up meeting each other through the community and they realized that they lived really super close together. And so they've started getting together 
and they're doing some dyeing together. So Crystal taught me so much today. We talked, dyed, and did some support spinning together on our woodland on our woodland um, handcraft spindles. Best fiber friends. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that fantastic? I was so happy when I read this. I just thought that is that's the whole reason for doing what we do. Love that sweater, uh, fair isle sweater. What an inspiring community participation today. Yes, I totally agree, Hannah. Um, such beautiful finished objects, says Josie. Absolutely. This one is from Vicky. Love this. Sparkle filled hand spun yarn. Diana, I feel like she was speaking to us when she posted this. These yarns are, they're just so fun. Um, I really like the colors on this skein. Merino, Corydale, and some sparkly stuff. I don't remember what the sparkly stuff was. I should have kept the labels. It's all good, Vicky. Really? <laughs> You're just playing and having fun. Um, 12 to 13 wraps per inch, DK weight, 181 yards, 73 grams, and 100, uh, 1,100 yards per pound. I originally was going to blend three different bundles together. Uh, like the last time I was color playing, I didn't like my mini sample skein. So I split the blue wool in half and did two different sets of Rolex, and this is the first set. And actually, she's since posted the second set on Slack, and it it's beautiful. Really well done, Vicky. Really gorgeous. Gorgeous spinning too. Yeah, those colors are amazing. I love this so much. Swoon, absolutely. <laughs> That's from Diana. Uh, wonderful sweater and skirt. The dying date sounds like a lot of fun. Absolutely. This is from Linda Sue. I thought this was so fun. So this is weaving. My other weaving has been on my Inkley loom. I have completed two small bands and made them into crazy ribbon earrings. Can we just for a minute? Like, how much fun are these? These would be incredible at a um, at a, a, a fair, um, you know, a Christmas market. The sun just started streaming in. I'm just like soaking it up. Uh, I know it creates glare, but oh my goodness, it's so lovely to see the sun. Aren't these fantastic? Like these are fantastic. Um, after a similar article and project in the current Little Looms magazine, I am quite happy with them. My third is started. We'll try to sell at a craft show and what doesn't sell will be gifts. I think these are so awesome. Very cool earrings, such cute earrings. Um, those earrings are so creative. You could totally sell these because of the Christmas colors, um, at a craft fair or, um, yeah, I was thinking the artisan sale, um, um, Diana, these would just be awesome if you could whip up a whole bunch. I have all of the hardware to make the earrings, like to make the earrings part, because I used to make a lot of jewelry, and um, I have all of that. All we'd have to do is weave, weave, do some ankle weaving. So now I'm all inspired <laughs> for the artisan sale for next year. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I could totally do that. All right, this last one is a zero to hero. It's a incredibly inspirational. It's just awesome. This is from Amanda. Uh, my long-term goal is to make myself a hand-spun, hand-woven coat. I took a big first step towards that goal in the last few weeks. As part of my Make 9 this year, I made my husband, Scott, a pea coat. It, it is all commercial fabric as I wanted to concentrate on the construction rather than anything else this time round. Um, it is blue, blue Vadmol, I think that's how you say it, um, outer fabric, linen interlinings, green viscous lining, green blue Corosa buttons, and silk sewing thread. I aim for it to be 100% compostable at the end of its life. There is also a detachable hood to go with it. I learned so much about fit and construction and tailoring by doing this project. The pattern is Goldstream Peacoat by Thread Theory Designs, and I constructed it using a mishmash of traditional dressmaking and traditional ta tailoring techniques. The pattern was designed with dressmaking techniques in mind and by sewing this, I realized how much I want to learn more about ironwork and traditional tailoring. I love working with the fabric in my hands and shaping the wool to fit the 3D curves of the body. I have so far to go on my learning journey when it comes to tailoring, but I'm very happy with this first step. Oh, and so is Scott. And how cute is he? He is so cute wearing his, his jacket. Isn't it fantastic? It looks amazing. Yes, I'm going to steal and adapt that earring idea for an ornament exchange that I'm part of. That's great, Chris. I hope that you do. Um, that would make it an excellent addition to our sale. I totally agree, Diana. It, would, uh, it wouldn't be hard to do either. It's like ribbon candy. <laughs> They'd go like hotcakes at some kind of Christmas fair. I agree, Kelly. I think they would just 
you know, and somebody like my, like Nora would want them. You know what I mean? You could do all different colors. Um, yeah, I think it's just fantastic. That coat is amazing. Coat Envy coat is an inspired project. Your photos are just are gorgeous of your project. What a great coat, amazing project. Yes. Are the hat and scarf handmade too? I'm pretty sure that they are, Eve. Um, I'm just waiting for the photos to cycle, but I'm positive. Yeah, so the scarf is the one that she did with the orange, um, was it the orange warp or the orange weft and the gray? And then um, the toque is, is hand knit as well and hand spun. I'm pretty sure it's hand spun. So yes, I am so impressed with all of the talent, awesome coat and all other projects shared today too. The hat is, yes, Amanda, thank you for, for um, popping in with that. The hat, the hat is hand spun and the scarf is the orange and green one for a few months ago. Yes, it is so much fun to see what everybody's doing and thank you so much for sharing so much um, in the community and for continuing to post photos. I know that it takes longer and that it um, is something for some, some of us have to learn how to do and I just appreciate that you guys take the time and that you do that. Um, it just makes it so much richer to be able to share so much on the show and to show what's going on in our community and not to just show yarn and spinning because at some point our spinning has to go further than that it needs it it the you can only stash so many skeins right and if you don't work with your yarns then you don't know what you like about your yarns so it's an opportunity to go one step further so one day in the future one day i'll be able to share amanda's finished hand spun hand woven coat one day even if it's five years from now so Really good to see everybody today. Thank you so much for allowing me to wax poetic about everything that's going on in the community and about all of my projects and makes that I'm that I've got going on. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. To those who are still dealing with um, the flooding and everything here locally, um, our thoughts and prayers are with you guys. And um, thank you for just being here and being creative and inspiring one another. Until next week, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And um, I hope that you all get inspired this week. Bye everyone. <laughs>